learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. Today's project is to start a bunch of projects and not finish any of them. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty bad about that. I, uh, I, don't, I don't finish anything ever. I uh, started a tiny house and never got it done. Uh, down here you'll see that camper that I never finished that we lived in for four years. You'll see that I haven't finished cutting enough firewood for next year. Yes, I'm being a little sarcastic. I uh, started a new project. I started digging a hole for a root cellar. And I thought I made it pretty clear what my intentions are with the root cellar. And I got a lot of people telling me, well, you got all these projects started and they're only half finished. You need to finish your projects before you start a new project. Well, I'm not really sure exactly what you're talking about. The only project that I've started that could even come close to that interpretation, which is I've only got it half finished, is the well. And as far as I'm concerned, the well is in an operable condition. I'm going to build a well house. I've said that, yes. But that doesn't mean that the, the project's half finished and I'm not gonna get back on it. As many of my subscribers will know, I do everything on a budget. In about a week, I'm gonna go buy the material to start building a well house. But in the meantime, I thought this is a perfect opportunity to test out if the well house is even gonna make a difference. Is it even worth spending the money? If the groundwater is still getting into the well, then what's the point of spending the money on a well house? It doesn't make any difference, I don't need it. I decided I was gonna test it out with the tarp, which I did, and it rained once, and the water was really clean. I'm really hopeful by the time we go get more materials, it will rain again really hard, see if it's gonna work, I don't have to have a well house there. Carolyn and I was just talking about this this morning after I got all these comments telling me that I need to finish projects before I start a new one. The well house is really just kind of a, going to be a tool shed. It's not really necessary. Everything that I've done will keep the groundwater out of it, I think. But we're going to use it as a tool shed, put the power tools in. You see the hose laying on the ground. We're going to put the hose in there. It's not going to be very big. It's only four foot by four foot. And it's going to be about four foot tall. Now the porch roof. I have said many times when I built the tiny house and I built the porch that I wasn't even going to start that till the spring. Well, I know it's springtime, but I mean, I've explained this many times. The porch roof is not a priority. It's a nice thing to have and we really want it. What I was waiting for was to make sure that it wasn't going to freeze so I can pour concrete. Well, we're actually going to get freezing temperatures this coming week. So I'm glad I kind of held off on it. It doesn't really matter. I think we're going to get enough warm days I could do it. But again, I'm gonna buy materials for that next week. I'm gonna start working on that as soon as the well house is done. I have a plan for everything that we do. It's like the tiny house. When I was building the tiny house, people didn't understand why I would stop. What I said was it was gonna take me a year to build a tiny house. That wasn't based on my ability to actually build the tiny house. That was based on $500 a month. It was actually gonna be 10 months. Our plan was to spend $5,000 total $500 a month, that would have been 10 months. 
And we actually came under the time frame. I think it took us eight months. So we actually beat our time frame. Of course, there was a couple months we spent more money than we needed to, specifically because of the siding. That was like $2,600 that we had to spend all at once. The root cellar, I thought I made myself very clear. I have no intentions of finishing this anytime soon. It's going to be one of these things while I'm waiting for the project money to come in to just dig and have something to do. This may take me a year to complete. If I were to just work myself to death on this, I wouldn't be any good for anything. I'm, I'm kind of getting up in the age where I want to make sure I don't overextend myself and hurt my back and all that. I spend about an hour out here. I'll dig a little bit and then I might actually go and move on to the next project. Or I might not do anything this day. And then there's the pole barn that I'm going to build or the woodshed. I'm going to build out of cedar trees for the post. That's why it's called a pole barn because you're using cedar trees for the poles. And I've got several of the cedar trees down here already cut and ready to go. And I'm going to put that in concrete so that'll be the post coming out of the ground. I'm not going to actually put it in the ground. I'm going to put it in buckets of concrete. But you should be able to see them laying on the ground there. I think it's going to be 32 feet long by 12 feet wide, if I'm not mistaken. Now on this, I am absolutely in no hurry. Even if I don't start this project this year, I'm okay with it. I am not going to spend any money on this. This is my goal. Last year, we were able to find a lot of material for the tiny house for free or basically next to nothing. We found all those windows. I think we spent $40 for those windows. Just cheap. So I don't want to spend a bunch of money on this considering it's just going to be built out of cedar trees. So if I would go out and buy two by sixes and they're going to be $15 a piece, it would run me broke. And I don't see any point in doing it. I'm going to either find the materials for free or the other option is, and Carolyn and I was again talking about this this morning, is if we can find enough cedar trees here, I might just forego using any lumber and just use cedar trees to build the whole thing. That's going to be a, quite the project. I mean, that's going to be hard to do. I'm not sure I have the skill set to do it. It may not be level and square, but that might be our the way we go is just build the rafters and the headers and everything out of cedar tree post. Now, I don't have a sawmill and I have no intentions of actually going buying one or renting one. So I'm just going to have to do the best I can and level everything else off I can, even though the top of the cedar tree is skinnier than the bottom. But I'm going to do this for free. Now, the metal we've talked about, I, I was hoping that I could find used metal somewhere. But Carolyn said, no, if we're going to do it, let's make it look nice. And so she said, we'd buy the, the silver metal that we've used for the chicken coop and that we're going to use for the well. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But to, to spend $12, 15 for a two by six is just not possible. I'm not gonna do it. And then somebody else suggested that then when you're in the middle of something, you'll stop and go and do firewood. Firewood will always take priority over everything else. No exceptions. Well, I can't think of any exceptions. I should say that. Firewood is important and it's, it's money. This is cash. This is cash right here for me. I could sell it and make cash. That's like a job. So if I find somebody who wants to give away free firewood or I see a downed tree somewhere, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to work on firewood. It, heat, <laughs> I'm not going to do without heat. It was such a struggle this last year trying to find dry firewood that would burn in our stove. And I'm definitely not going to be like some of these people I heard this winter. It was negative temperatures out. They don't have firewood. So I could hear chainsaws running everywhere. Not me. I'm going to be inside where it's nice and warm by a nice fire. So when there's an opportunity for me to cut firewood in comfortable temperatures, I'm going to do that. Then somebody suggested, well, you don't need to split it. You can just let it sit and get back to your next project. The smaller you cut your pieces into and split your pieces into, the faster it will dry. If I leave this hickory in big rounds like this, It'll take three or four years to dry. But when I split it up, it should dry within a year. Now, I do not feel like I'm a procrastinator on anything. Sometimes I probably get too obsessed with projects. That's been what I've been accused of by people who actually know me. I feel like I finish every project that I start. I always have a plan for my projects. Now, the last thing about this whole thing, 
What difference does it make? I'm free. That's the whole point of this channel is finding your freedom. And so if I decide, you know what, I'm getting a little burned out on this project. I think I'm gonna step away from it. I can't, and I can go do something else until my body and mind and happiness returns. I know when I built the tiny house, I was getting burned out. I mean, I just didn't want to do it anymore. The mistakes I was making was driving me crazy. And the more I worked on it, the more mistakes I was making. So I, I feel like I was actually causing myself more work just because I was tired of doing the work. So I've taken a break from that. And now I'm feeling pretty rejuvenated where, you know what, maybe I could build a little chicken coop or I can build a, a well house or I can build a, a porch roof. So I hope I can inspire you to find happiness no matter how hard you have to work at it. Thanks for watching.